But really what I want to try and do is to reduce a lot of the bulk and a lot of the weight. So by doing that, um, we can do this vertical skimming effect. You've probably seen me do this before. It's where we take everything out from the head shape and then we start and keep that blade nice and flat as you can see and then direct the hair and we're going straight down and just following that head shape. So we're going straight down. So vertically just coming out and then just working it straight down. Now, you can see we're taking quite a lot of hair away um, because what we want to do is we want to create something that's a lot flatter. Um, with George's hair, it does grow out instead of down. So really what we want to try and do today is to give it something that's a little bit more square. It's got a little bit more edge to it, but it's still organic. So it's still super organic in its shape. So no straight lines, nothing. If it's going to sit that way and the hairline grows that way, we're good with that. That's what we're all about. It's not about trying to punch in punch in different lines. So let me just get my mask. As I forgot. Now, we're better. So it's just what we have here is just something now we're going to work from that central section and we're going to work our way around. So easy to find the guide. All you have to do is pull that section and it's right there. And if you want, you can just lay it on the top and then keep that blade nice and flat. And then you just start to move down as much as you have. Now, again, you want to stay in control. So if you want to take that little piece of hair, leave it, and then you just go in. So you have control of what you want to cut. So you can't go as flat. So you angle the blade a little, and then you just run that down and just taper it down into the head. So really, really simple, but like you can see already, if we turn into the light, just put the head down, Georgia. You can see that you get this really nice little organic sort of natural sort of shape that's fitted in to the head. So really, once you start in that central section, you just start to pivot around the head, pulling everything out to the middle of your chest. So it's very, very simple. You just take each section, keep that flat, and then start to work down. And guys, if you've tuned in or if there's any Sebastian um, friends, ask any, any questions, whether it comes to the feather blade, what we use, why we use it. Um, Randy will ask the questions here and I'll gladly sort of, you know, answer them if I can. So don't be afraid to shout out or say hi or as we work our way around. So this is something that I really, really love to do is use the blade. And why do I use the blade? I use the blade because I get a softer, more grown out effect. If you want to have something a lot more structured, well then you use the scissor. You don't have to use the blade all the time. But when the, when the time arrives that you want to create something that's really nice and soft, this is the, the tool um, and it, to be honest, you know, the hair grows out a lot nicer when you're going in with the blade like that. And then I'm going to use the blending shears as well, which gives it a sort of a double whammy where it really sort of softens all the sort of outer um, line that you've put in there with that blade. So you're getting so many hellos from all over the world, Toronto, Portugal. Hi, Toronto, Portugal. Yep. How is everybody? Glad to see everybody's on. So you can see now my body is just pivoting here. I'm just sort of starting to come out and around. Now my, I'm just turning here. You can see my shoulders can stay nice and straight. I'm not bending over with my back. Uh, Sasho Kremich, uh, our friend, is asking, have you tried the new feather blades uh, for rapid cuts, the green box? No, I haven't. I've seen them, Sasha, but I haven't tried them yet. Looking forward to trying them to see... Um, you know, again, you get so used to certain blades and these are very sharp. So I hope they're as sharp. I hope maybe they're sharper, maybe because they're rapid. They maybe they get through the hair a little quicker. I'm not too sure, but I'm really looking forward to trying them out. Um, the small blade is fantastic as well. I really, really like the mini. Um, it's great. Rob, uh, Rob is asking, what brand of blending shear will you be using? Okay, so... 
I have a blending shear that has quite big teeth in it and you can see the curvatures on it as well. And it's sort of wide in that sense. So uh, I want to talk about how I use the, the blending shears. So the brand, Acrolef, I think, there you go, Rob. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really just, it's more in when, um, when you use the blending shears, I just wanted to talk about how I like to use the blending shears. Again, you can use it in so many different ways, but um, yeah. So first of all, what we want to do here is to really go in and take away all this bulk and all this weight. So it's almost like a little undercut, but not necessarily. We're going to blend it in, but it's just going to be something that has this really nice sort of short little crop to it. Um, and again, this is really fun. And I, you can really see that you can get things done fast. So you can really see that I've really worked. I've nearly got this side and, and the back done. So you can really work quickly. Um, the other thing is with the feather blade is you think that I'm not following a guide, but I'm following a guide just as you would like with a scissor. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm just following that guide, just pulling everything directly out. And if I wanted to go and check anything, it's all there in front of me. So it's, it's, it's very, very simple work. And it's very, very creative. It's something that like, I really love to do is to sort of go in there and sort of play with the hair as much as I can um, and sort of reduce weight, reduce length. Don't worry about any little bits. As I said, this is all gonna come away. Now, let's just go in with our blending shears. So we are taking the blending shears at an angle. So a lot of the time people use them in a more horizontal way. I like to use them a little bit more sort of vertical. So it's softening out everything that we've done. It's blending everything in. And that's why I call them sort of a blending shears. And it's softening out, almost giving you this sort of like, I know it sounds weird, but like a furry effect, like instead of it being a square effect to the hair. So it's a little bit more of a furry effect so that it grows out super nice. Um, it still stays feminine. It doesn't get too harsh. Uh, I don't know if people like to use the blending shears in this way, but I, I really do like to use the blending shears in a way that it just sort of makes the hair could grow into this really nice little haircut as it sort of gets longer it can look even cooler you know so again it's just taking it at a diagonal or a more vertical line so that it sort of blends that hair in so you can see I'm not too worried when I'm using the feather blade that if I leave a few little pieces here and there because that's really my rough cut my blending shears is just now really going in and just checking everything through and keeping everything nice and square. Um, and we'll do this in the back as well. But I just wanted to show you, and we're gonna use the blending shears on the top also. And that blending shears is gonna be used in a more angular, like where we will take it and take out some of that weight in doing some angular lines like that as well. So, and again here, you might think it takes a little bit of time to do this, but I really like the fact that you can soften everything out as well. Instead of using a scissor, you can just like go in and soften all that little line out so it just grows out nicely. Any questions for me, Randy? Yeah, there's, um, you know, just a lot of people commenting that it's a perfect haircut for a uh, your pretty model. Yeah, yeah. Um, everybody seems to agree That's that this good. is. Uh, yeah, she has a fantastic a suitable. Yeah, she's got a great bone structure. Um, she's got a great head shape. You know, so you know, we're fortunate. Throw all that away. And now we're just going to go in. Take away any little lines before we go in with our blending shears. Notch those away, little pinch and cut, just pop them away, soften out all that line. So really sort of very, it's a very sort of little artistic approach to how we would cut the hair, you know? And as I said, the 
the blade is really taking away the length first and then it's the blending shears that's giving the detail so if i move away yeah, because when we're in the black it's hard to see but when we do something like this you can see that we're keeping everything nice and square it's very soft it's got a nice little feel to it it's definitely got that furry feel so we need to start on this side uh, with our blade again so very simply you just start to go along um, and again take out that little section just to start you back off again and just keep control of the hair and just run down the head really fast i think it's such a great way to sort of reduce the weight and you know it's automatically building the shape for you straight away so you're visually seeing everything happen super fast so even though it's not the finished product by using the feather blade but what it's doing is it's reducing where you need to to sort of fit it in and then it's just getting that blending shears and sort of refining everything and it's the refinement of the uh, blending shears is what i love it just gives it that extra little bit of refinement so again we're not worried about you know hairlines we're working with the hairline here this is an organic sort of shape so it's not something that we want to push in or pump in any lines because then i feel it just gets too structured what you don't want to do is you don't want structure in this you want it all to be really really soft um, and organic so again just keeping everything also when you're using the blade make sure the moisture stays in the hair and it's balanced so if i start to move along the head and i feel that i want to just keep the hair damp a little bit more you just remember just go in use your potion nine light or your dark oil or whatever it is and that's just going to keep consistency in the blade so it's going to keep the movement of the blade through the hair better and um, don't oversaturate the hair if you oversaturate the hair with the blade you're going to take more hair away so there's that fine line when i use the blade i just like to have the hair um past damp best way to describe it it's almost like it's past damp damp or dry obviously you know dry hair there's going to be less going to come off but if the hair is saturated it's really really hard to actually get a even sort of cut to the hair you know so you can see we've still got nice control um, as we move along so we're just moving along i have a question for you um, randy has a question so it, um, wh when would you choose to use the, uh, the blade and the texturizing shears together like this? Is, would you still use it if you were leaving it longer or um, when do you choose to use both? I, um, if you had a bob, so say we did a graduated bob using the feather blade, um, you would use the uh, blending shears as well where you would maybe use the skinning effect when you were graduating the bob so that you would fit it into the shape. But maybe you don't want to skim too high to ruin the top of the hair. So then you can go in with the blending shears and you can go in vertically and you can actually reduce the weight a little bit more. So the combination of both really, really works well um, when you have thicker hair. So with George's hair, as you can see, we have a lot of hair here today. So it's actually, it's great that we can actually sort of go in and sort of use the blade and then the blending shears to really refine the shape. But you can use this on longer hair. Um, you'll see when I get to the top that you can even use it on very long hair around the front. You could, you know, really go in. I don't like horizontal and everybody knows why you don't like horizontal is because even with the thicker blades i always feel that you're going to get some pieces that are going to come through and it might be just that little bit hard on maybe leave an indentation on the hair and what we want is seamless hair we don't want to have um hair that looks like there's lines or anything in that so i that's why I call it the blending shears as well. I mean, I, I feel that yes, it's giving texture and it's a texturizing, but I do like to use it more 
to sort of blend, um, whether that's taking weight out, whether that's sort of reducing length in certain areas, but I just like to use it to soften, you know, this, what, what did I say, furry? It could be cashmere-y, it could be, it gives this a different effect. It's almost like it's like super soft. It's really... Does it's, it grow out better? I feel it does. I feel it grows into something completely different, and I think it grows out nice and soft. Other people might go, no, nah, I don't like the effect. But again, it's up to the individual. It's up to the individual. Some people would like to put in stronger lines. Um, some people would like to take this back section and make it super, super strong. Um, I just feel that this is a more organic shape, so I feel that it will grow out into something that will be really nice also. So, is it more versatile with product? Does it accept product differently? It does. So um, if I was to put product into it and I wanted to even sort of maybe, instead of the sides being so flat, if I put some product in and maybe you just wanted to do this, it could look a little punky looking. It would look more textured. So I think it allows the product to really, you know, give the hair a texture, you know? So now at the back section, you can see there's a few little stray bits. Again, I'm just coming up and it's almost like a scissors over comb, but I'm coming up off the head again, just keeping everything nice and soft and just going through everything. Sasha is commenting that he really loves to use the blade and the texturizing shears on yes. the salon floor for, the, for these reasons. Exactly, and I, I like to hear that you use it on the salon floor because really it's great combination you know it's something that you can really sort of you know longer shorter bobs um shags um and and for guys it's fantastic for guys because you know a lot of guys don't want to look like they're joining the army you know they they want to have more grown out looks mm -hmm. they want to look like they've got you know blended in hairlines they don't necessarily want square lines so you can see as, a, as George's so this hair starts to come alive now, now by pushing in here under that occipital bone, we can really start to build up that shape. So like you could see this would work really well on a guy where you wanted to really fit the head in, you know? So it's important. Um, and as you go, I'm just gonna pop your head down, Georgia, for a sec. Let me just, you, you'll see the weight line here. So let's just go up here, here it is. So. Now I'm gonna put a little bit more pressure in under the occipital bone, because I really wanna emphasize the head shape. So just going in nice and gent, gently, just going in slowly and coming up to that shortest point, which is around here. So really working on the hairline being natural. And I don't think, yes, so people are probably gonna say, but you could do this with a scissor. Yes, absolutely, you could do this with a scissor, but I feel for what we're trying to create is this really sort of loose, sort of softness to the hair. I don't think you would get the same effect. You might have to go in and start to slow, slightly point cut. You might have to go in and do a different effect, but it's maybe hard to see um, because the hair is so dark but you can definitely see already the texture that it's giving it. Um, can you see that, Randy? That it sort of looks like it's a different type of texture. It's not so clean. It's just something that's gonna be able to like, even if you do that, like mm -hmm. it's got this really cool little- It's a lot softer. Softer, yeah, exactly. So yeah, so basically we're just working around the head, making sure everything is nice and even. But honestly, you should try this on, on guys' hair as well. This could be really something really cool that you would use on guys' hair that sort of looks a little bit more streety or looks a little bit more grown out looking. Ray Ramirez says her hair is just amazing. Oh, yeah, it's, her hair is fantastic. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very lucky. Um, let's hope Georgia likes it too. I think she will. It's a little bit of a change. Wayne is asking, Wayne Burns, will you yeah. use a, a neck razor on the hairline? No, um, because I, I feel that, um, and I should be able to show you, Wayne. Now that I'm here, 
So let's just have a look. So yeah, so there's, we've got this here. We've got a little bit of it growing up here and we've got it coming down here. The only thing that I would do, Wayne, would be to maybe go through it and by just using my feather blade would be to just maybe soften that out just a little. Um, and that's really just gently just going through because I really want to keep the hairline as much as I can. So I'm just going and softening everything out even just doing a little blade over comb there just to soften that out. I want it to be as organic as possible. So um, if that answers your question, it's just to try and keep it as organic in every sense of the matter. So just... Joan is asking, would the clippers be faster? Um, would the clippers be, like to run the clippers up like yeah. this? Yeah, but it's a different effect. So yes, it is, but... Um, I'll be totally honest with you, the, the attention to detail or the artistry sort of, I don't know, it doesn't feel the same for me. But I mean, again, everyone to themselves, if you wanted to go in there and use a razor, a number three or whatever like that, but I can, I can guarantee you it's not gonna grow out as quick or as, as well, and it's not gonna have this little furry effect. It's not gonna have that sort of delicate sort of softness to it. Wayne is agreeing, he's saying it's such a natural look and it looks fabulous. Yeah, but thank you, Wayne. But uh, yeah, I, and that's not downing the clippers in any way. Some people are super busy and they have to do what they have to do. But let's just blow it up for a sec. Let's blow the hair up. So if we see from here on that profile angle, you get this really nice head shape where it sort of has built itself up. It's super, super soft. Um, and I think, you know, it gives it a totally different effect. So I'm just checking through before we drop the top. Um, and I think, yeah, definitely when we blew the hair up a little bit, you can see there that there's, that's the difference, you know? So let me just go through here. And then do this side. And this is just a little blade over comb just to make sure that we're even. Lots of appreciation coming in for sharing your knowledge. Oh, no, it's great. I really enjoy, it's every month we're on, and uh, yeah, we feel like we're part of the hairbrain, not just the community, the family at this stage. Mm -hmm. We've done so much together, you know, yeah. so it's been great. Okay, let's count how many clips are in here. One, <laughs> two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, just nine. <laughs> so, like, look at this hair. It's just phenomenal. Like, it really is amazing. Yeah. So, like, you can see there when I start to move it around. It just has this beautiful light to it, you know. So, just a little bit of potion nine light um, and again just it's just so we can have nice control on the hair you know allison said thanks i've never thought to do razor over comb yeah so allison razor over comb will just give you that again softer approach it's you know if you want to have something that's just that softness to it there you go and wayne is asking what is the comb you're using with this is a YS Par comb. It's one of their bigger combs. It's not the, it's the larger comb. Um, I like to use, it It takes nice big sections, and especially when I'm working, if I'm going in smaller, I'll use the smaller YS Par comb. Um, yeah. So, you can start anywhere here. So like, if you look here, you can go, right, maybe we could start, you know, we could start in the back. You know, because it's got a little bit of a wedge going on there. So we could start from the back section. 
and we could start to blend that in. So all you have to do is to go over the top. You can really see the versatility in, in the way that you cut the bottom. If you wanted to just leave it here, you could and it would be great. Yeah. I mean, we should warn everybody that, that she wants a really nice short haircut though, right? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, you could actually leave it like an undercut like so, so you could have this type of effect, you know? And what you would do in that situation would be just take some sections like so, and then you would take, you know, your horizontal sections and you would actually be able to just blend that in. So by just skimming the hair like this, you could actually just go through and just sort of take some of the weight and the length away at the same time. So you would start to blend it in. So that would be to go for something where you would actually sort of leave a lot more length on the top. But what I'm gonna do is, seeing as I've started there, so why don't we just do this? We just go over the top, the apex, just, and just isolate that hair. Come through, like so over the top here just nice to get everything away and stay in control like that and now we can just basically go through and just take a section and isolate this like that and very simply you can either do lots of, you know, many different techniques here, but I'm gonna just skim the hair. So I'm gonna just gently just come through and I'm just gonna gently go through and just skim the hair away so we can sort of reduce some of the length and the weight at the same time. And for people who are just joining, yeah. um, we're doing a pixie, correct? We're doing a form of it called it a pixie crop. So we're, we sort of crop the sides so it's almost got this little boyish sort of look through the uh, sides and the back by using the, the, the blending shears and the feather blade. Um, but really what we're doing is we're going for something that's more of a pixie, urchin sort of like, you know, organic shape. It's not something that has, um, there's one thing that Georgia asked, but she didn't like solid lines. She liked to have her hair that was just like messy and textured. So it is a short pixie crop. So by skimming the hair, it also gives you a nice cool little texture as well. Uh, if you don't mind, Allison just joined and she's saying, uh, if you wouldn't mind telling her what razor you're using. Yeah, so hi Allison. So I am using a feather razor, a uh, feather blade. I change it once or twice in a haircut. I, I change them a lot. Um, you know, George's hair is absolutely beautiful, so it's gonna just handle one change, so that's easy. Um, so I'm taking now my sections nice and clean, keep that blade nice and flat on the hair, not too much elevation, I'm just coming out off the head, and then I'm just skimming through the hair. I want to have lots of texture, so the blade is gonna do that for me um, on this type of hair. So it's gonna be like, um, something that's very organic. So I'm just sort of working and pivoting around each section. It's very artistic when you get to this level, when you're starting to, you don't want to blend, blend, because you just want to have something that's gonna come through and then move around the head shape. Because again, we're gonna blend with the blending shears. So these are things, this is the combination of working both, you know? So again, I'm just sort of keeping my elevation nice and low and coming through. And remember, the blending shears will do everything then for you as we go along. I'll actually use the blending shears once I've taken down this last section. Can I ask what you decided to do first? Did you decide to do the haircut first and then find the model, or did you find the model and then say, what could I do? No, so Georgia um, was here in the salon and, and she was getting her hair done for prom. And I noticed her going upstairs, I wasn't doing her hair. And I said to um, Travis, who was actually doing her hair at the time, I said, I wonder would she be interested in doing some hair modeling? Uh, so I just went up and asked you, didn't I, Georgia? And basically, that's that. And then, through consultation, um, I knew from her, she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm into like doing this. I'm into sort of 
reducing the weight out of my hair. So I knew we had somebody who was like, yeah, up, up for something, you know, up for change. So it's really nice when you get somebody like that who's ready to go. So again, let's, because you're right here, you can see now, if we just want to blend that in, start to run up, go again. There's very little, like you can see, there's here, and there's that section. So we're just going in and just blending. And just go through again. Just go up and just blend. So it's dropping the feather blade, taking up the blending shear. Dropping the feather blade, taking up the blending shear. She had fine hair, Gigi is asking. Yes. Uh, one benefit, um, she has such thick hair. If she had fine hair, would you do less texturizing? Absolutely. And you could probably maybe use a combination of the feather blade and scissor. So basically you would just drop the blending shears for a scissor where you would point put the, you know, the feather blade is going to take away all that length for you. It's going to work nice and fast in the salon. And then you're going to go in and then instead of, you know, using something like this where you're taking a lot of that weight out so as that it can become something that's really textured, you could maybe just leave and use the scissor in a point cut situation. Now I'm back to the feather blade. So now I'm just going to start to work around the head. If you want to have to find some sections that I put already, they're right here. So it's, again, it's really, really simple stuff. Finding the guides and blending it through. Find the guide. If you weren't teaching this, how long would this haircut take and how long would you book in the salon? Um, change this big I would still even though it's it starts off quick there's a lot of detail at the end mm -hmm. so I would still give myself like an hour you know I, I I would dry it then and then I would detail it as it dries because it'll take on a different form when it's dry too a close attention to when it's dry so you would get it done in an hour for sure So again, if I want to find that section, it's right there. And I just want to run it down the head shape. Yeah, Wayne had a comment. Uh, he said that he supposes that you can uh, customize this haircut in so many different ways. Yes, absolutely. And you would customize it to the head shape. You would customize it to the hairline. You would customize it to the texture of the hair. You know, you would, you would customize it in in so so many ways like you know it can go on and on and on you can go and sort of detail it using you know visuals then where you would sort of work the blade use the scissor use the blending shears in so many different ways now i'm coming to the front Yov has a uh, question. Are you over directing the hair toward the front? Um, I suppose slightly, slightly. I'm just directing it into the last, the previous section, but I'm not like over directing it back, but I am directing it into that section. Why don't I just get it over? So you can see, if I was to look, there's the section, and then I just go into that one and then just work my way down. So you're more just pivoting around. Exactly. And you can see here with Georgia, look at this jump that's in her hair. Like it's great. It doesn't really matter because it's going to give it, when you cut it like this, it's going to move in different ways. So it's going to have this cool little texture that it's going to jump up and sit down. And you know, the worst thing to do is battle something like that. If you want to go and leave the length, if you've got a cowlick, leave the length, leave the weight. But if we're going for something like this, embrace it, cut it off, cut it shorter, you know, really go for something that has this cool like texture to the hair, you know, so you embrace it almost. Or like say through the top here where it jumps a little bit, 
don't be afraid like on, on something like this to go in and just hit it and go a little shorter to make it look like as i said this is a little pixie so you can go in and you can detail that top section to maybe make that an accent so your little accent would be here or around the crown where you would just go in and just take some little slices and actually make it be something that's like Cool and that uh, says she loves it, and that she that you can almost mold the hair when you use the blade. Yes, so. yeah. It, it's certainly a much more artistic approach, but again, what I liked about the previous question was he asked, was I, you know, directing the hair into or was I not? So you can still see that I'm following a guide. So it's not just a lot of the time. I think people think that like. You know, oh well, you know, he's, he's, he's not following anything. He's just sort of working it through. And it's, it's actually the opposite. You know, for me, I like to, I actually like to find balance. I like to be actually able to find guides. Um, and I like to see the shapes appear. So for me, it's really important that I can actually sort of find guides and just feel balanced. Like, it gives me a security, you know. Going from that shortest point and just working around the head shape. Going down. What I do like about the blade is see how you can switch sides and your hand can be now working from here and it's really comfortable. It's not, you know, like if you look at my, I'm not bent over in any way. My body position can stay quite straight so my back's not, you know, broken. So I can still see my guide and I can stand over it and I can just run it down. So there's little bits of that that I find really comfortable on a busy, busy Saturday when you feel like, you know, you know sometimes you're back and you've been working hard. This gives you, um, you know, a different approach to, to the way you can cut hair. Um, Tammy Dreyer is just saying, how often do you do tutorials? Are you on YouTube as well? I love your work and make it, you make it look so beautiful and easy. Uh, yeah. Maybe you could tell her about the HV Live Absolutely. series that we did together. Yeah, thank you so much, Tammy. So, um, the URL is hvlive.me. So yeah, basically we um, and Hairbrained partnered up together. And what we have created is, um, it's on Hairbrained. Um, and it's basically four haircuts, um, all using the feather blade. And you can go on and you can get almost five hours. You'd be sick and tired of me. Um, but five hours of haircuts that are of iconic haircuts, as in the pixie, the shag, the bob, the graduated bob. And the point of difference is that it's the Sebastian way. So it's using the feather blade on all of those haircuts. So. That's something that we had a great time, Randy. We did it over two days, I think. Let me just move around a bit so as we can pull in here. And yeah, basically we did them on doll heads. It was through COVID, um, but it was actually better to be honest because it's much more educational. I feel with the doll heads, we could really sort of spend a lot more time, be a little bit more sort of um, precise um, sometimes when you're doing lives like this, we only have a certain amount of time. So we have to work. Uh, you guys watching don't have all day either. So um, whereas with the hairbrained, um, you can go on, you can purchase it and you can watch it as many times as you want. You can go on there and, you know, watch hours of it or replay a pixie and replay the shag, replay the bob. Um, so. It, it, it's great. I mean, we, were, we really had a great time and I hope, you know, if you want to see me more, uh, we're here every month, but if you want to see something that's more educational, like tutorials, certainly creative, it's creative Immersion is the name. And it's on Hairbrain, what did you say? It, it's www.hblive.me. And if you get there and you just search Sebastian Creative Immersion, it'll be easy to find. There you go. Wow, that is so neat. So cute. Uh-huh. OK, 
Okay, so let's just, we have more to do, but you can actually see by sort of leaving a little bit of length around the front, working with the hairline, working with her hairline, it gives it this cool little texture that we can actually maneuver and play with and keep it flat or, you know, then go the opposite way. If you want to give it a little bit of that, you can sort of make it so product's going to love this. Like, I can't tell you, like, when she sort of gets product in there, it's just going to go crazy. So what I do want to do is, I feel that we're a little high right there. I feel that there's a little bit too much hair there and we need to refine that. So let me just, before we get the blending shears, let me just refine this because I did a little bit of blade work on the left side. So let me just refine this by splicing this just a little. Um, and again, that's just going through and just catching it on the, the toe of the blade. And that's just gonna keep, see our long bit there? So we just wanna go in and take that off. Go through, take that off. Frog says, regards from Armenia, legend. Oh, uh, <laughs> I think it was actually Hog's birthday yesterday, uh, so I wanna uh, wish you a happy birthday. We have somebody else to wish a happy birthday to as well, Randy, yeah. Gerard. It's his birthday today, that's why he's not with us today, so happy birthday, Gerard. We'll probably have a drink by the pool and have the tune. I hope so. I know so he's out see, in I'm New York with his family. Checking through. That's all I'm doing, just checking everything through. Again, you think that, you know, using the blade is something that you leave long bits and it's all crazy. Look, it's quite, it's quite good right through, you know? So by just doing this, it just, again, it helps me, makes me feel better that, you know, it's not something that's just random pieces of hair all over the place. So it's just... Mary says love in the texture. Uh, thank you, Mary. I think that's Mary from the UK. Is, she'll it's probably Ma say yes. Mary... Mary. Go Gogahan? Go yeah. Gohegan? Yeah. So again, the Sorry, Mary, I probably butchered it. <laughs> so again, just checking everything through. Orlance is looking great. Love Orlance. the pixie with the blade, makes it look so fitted and airy. Yes, yeah. So can we use the blow dryer for a second? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. We'll just put it on low. There's no rules for this kind of stuff. Yeah. So I'm just going to keep the blow dryer quite low. And just use my fingers. How is that GHD blow dryer? I know the irons are incredible. Yeah, I really like it. I mean, it's, it's, it's so good for the salon, you know, it's got plenty of power, the nozzle is fine, so when you're blow drying, you can really get direction there. Um, and they last, you mm. know, they, they certainly have that strength that you need for the salon. Frog says thank you for the birthday wishes. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Kathy says awesome techniques, can't wait to use them. Kathy? Kathy. Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, so before we put the product in, I always like to do this. Just do everything in its natural form. Just really comb it everything down. Christine Ramsey says Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn, there you go. So let's just do this. <laughs> I did. Her, her I last like name is pronounced Gagan. I did huh? totally butcher it. Huh? She, she corrected me. It's Gagan. Oh. <laughs> so basically, just by combing it all, each way, every way, it's nice to check everything around, make sure that you have your little undercut, but yet you have that nice texture. If you look with the white wall in the background, you have this really nice head shape. Everything balances so that when it grows out, you're gonna have that really nice sort of effect where this will grow out nice and then you'll have this nice texture through here as well. So it's important to take a second 
always to step back and have a look at your work. You've spent all this time, so it's important to step back and maybe look at that before any of the detail. So many people are gorgeous, beautiful. Gorgeous, wow. beautiful. Yeah. So this is a microweb fiber. So this is going to soak this up. See the so you're going to really sort of see, you know, this hair is going to just absolutely adore this. So maybe a little pump because it's, it's going to really, do, oh, maybe a little pump. There you go. So basically microweb fiber is micro, so you can really get jiggy with it. New Year's Eve. Alrighty. And then we can just start to work it through. Oh, that smells good. Smells good, doesn't it? Wow. Let me just take this away for a sec. Oh, this haircut is so great on you. So just let's just work it in. Now you can see why the blending shears helps because it sort of looks a little seamless, you know, it doesn't have, it has this sort of texture that runs from whether it's the sides, whether it's the back, you know, like it has it in all angles, you know? And that's what I love about it. It doesn't need to, be anything like perfect. It's perfectly imperfect actually, you know, if you look at it, it's something that like, just fits her. And you know, it's so important to work with what you have in the chair. I always say that and I think it's really important. So I was very fortunate to be able to, you know, cut George's hair, you know, we don't all get, you know, these every single day. So just to recap, we use the blade, First, to keep everything nice and square and work our way around the head, and then we use that blending shears. Remember, I didn't go anything horizontal, I just kept everything diagonal or vertical. And then through the top, we just basically went in there with our uh, feather blade again and really exposed this beautiful sort of head shape, the texture of her hair. Um, and I hope you like that. I hope you got some of that, you know, quick little techniques out of it. Can you see it in the mirror? Yeah, you liking it? You do? <laughs> good, good. Because it's a massive change. Like there's a lot of hair on the floor, but I, it looks so good on you. Thank you. Yeah. Good.